Ever since the Tesla Model S and Tesla's supercharger network launched back in 2012, Tesla's proprietary five-pin socket has been the standard way of charging a Tesla in many parts of the world, including North America, from Tesla's high-power superchargers to destination chargers, and even the universal mobile charging portable charge units. That five-pin socket has been all you've needed. If you felt the need, you could also use a standard J1772 charge cable for low power charging via any number of small mechanical adapter plugs. And if you were adventurous or wanted the ultimate in versatility, you could also buy a Chademo to Tesla adapter for a cool grand. The price has since dropped, so you could charge at 50 kilowatts from any public Chademo DC quick charge station. In Europe and other markets where CCS was the preferred charge standard, like New Zealand, for example, Tesla launched its Model S and supercharger network with a modified Type 2 Menenkes connector, deeper than the standard Type 2 connector, which meant it looked identical but wasn't quite the same, which caused embarrassing problems for any standard Type 2 EV owner who decided to plug into a supercharger station and then got their car stuck. Tesla's choice of connector meant that its supercharger-enabled cars could not only make use of its high-powered charging network, but also plug into standard European Type 2 charging stations, which are the de facto standard, to charge at slower speeds. And just like in other markets, a Chademo DC adapter was also available. In both markets, a CCS adapter, which would theoretically allow Tesla owners to make use of CCS quick charging stations, just like the Chademo adapter allows them to make use of Chademo GC quick charge stations, was something customers requested a lot. And while the Chinese market customers had their own proprietary connector on their Teslas alongside Tesla's own, the Chinese GBT rapid charge connector, CCS wasn't traditionally something Tesla supported. Until earlier today, that is, when Tesla announced that all Model 3 electric cars produced for Europe will come with a CCS rapid charge port on it instead of Tesla's own proprietary connector or its previous proprietary modified Type 2 connectors. In addition, it will retrofit all existing superchargers, and I presume by association all superchargers in countries where Tesla Model S, Model X were sold with Type 2 connectors, with dual power cables, one for Type 2 and one for CCS. This will mean existing Tesla Model S and Model X customers can continue to use Tesla's modified Type 2 plugs, while Model 3 customers, Tesla's just shipped its demo fleet to key markets in mainland Europe, will use the CCS cable instead. At the same time, Tesla confirmed that it will be making a CCS to Tesla adapter available for existing Tesla customers, making it possible at last to charge at a CCS quick charge station with a Tesla. This is all great news for Tesla owners and may mark a pretty big transition point in Tesla's history. But what does it mean for its customers and why is it happening? And what does it mean for Tesla's rapid charging standard moving forwards? Well, first up, I think it's important to acknowledge that this move seems to make business sense from Tesla's point of view. For a start, CCS is the preferred agreed-upon rapid charge standard in Europe, with major European automakers now using it, and only Nissan being the holdout on Chademo due to its Japanese origins. Tesla using CCS not only means that it brings Tesla in line with other automakers in Europe, but it also makes it easier for its customers to make use of the many new high-power rapid charging networks being established there. Sure, there's the supercharger network, but as we've seen already, Tesla's massive expansion in production volume means that existing supercharger stations are under increasing demand. It makes sense if Tesla customers can easily use other networks too to spread the load, especially if Model 3 becomes the, or one of the, dominant plug-in models in Europe. It also means Tesla can spend less time and money expanding its supercharger network than it might otherwise do. Although, of course, it does have to spend money on upgrading all those supercharger stalls to the dual head configuration. And since Tesla has now officially ended its free 400 kilowatts per year of supercharger access for Model X and S, and most Model 3 owners have always had to pay for supercharger access from the get-go, the draw of using supercharger versus another network for rapid charging, assuming speed is the same, is significantly lessened. Although I'd argue the supercharger network will probably still win on price in most situations. So 
okay, it's a financial benefit to Tesla to do this because it will reduce the urgency to need to expand supercharger networks. And it will also give Tesla customers more charging stations to use when out and about. And since CCS stations are now being rolled out that support 150 kilowatts of rapid charging power, and there's even a handful of units out there with next generation 350 kilowatt power circuits, Tesla customers won't be left waiting longer to charge than they would be at a supercharger station. Which brings me nicely to the next point. By adopting CCS in Europe, Tesla is technically opening itself up to a far higher powered rapid charging, assuming, of course, it meets CCS higher powered standards, of course. Since Tesla really needs to bring down the price of producing Model 3 and using an off-the-shelf connector will help with that, using CCS compatible charging tech helps Tesla achieve higher power levels both on and away from its supercharger network for Model 3 owners. Of course, I should note here that Tesla hasn't confirmed this fact, but I'd be very surprised indeed if it wasn't the case. And if it's true, it means Tesla's Model 3 really will be able to keep ahead of the latest higher power charging promised by the likes of Audi, Mercedes-Benz and Volkswagen for the not too distant future. Of course, I should also note that Tesla has been working on its own higher powered 3 to 400 kilowatt charging for some time anyway. So it makes sense that this charging system merges together at some point. OK, so what does this mean for Tesla's other cars? Well, if I'm honest, I'm expecting Model S and Model X to make the switch to CCS in Europe sometime soon. In markets where Tesla's own supercharger connector is used, however, well, I'm doubting we'll see a switch anytime soon unless Tesla can't make its current connector provide the three or 400 plus kilowatts of power. And in that case, we may see a similar switch to CCS there too. Finally, I guess I should answer that burning question that I know some of you have. Does Tesla switching to CCS in Europe mean that CCS cars will be able to finally use Tesla's supercharger network? Well, right now, I don't think it does, but Tesla has said it's open to the idea in the future. Presumably, this would all require the automakers in question to figure out a way of ensuring customers' cars are properly identified and can communicate correctly with Tesla's supercharger stations so that customers can be properly billed for the power they consume. If this does all happen, expect it to only work with newer vehicles, i.e. vehicles that are coming to market in the next few years or months, rather than cars that have been on the market for a while as these cars will likely lack the required communication protocols that are required to properly communicate billing information. Since Tesla has already spoken to other automakers, although none have reportedly signed agreements yet, it's most definitely a matter of when, not if. For what it's worth, I think this move is a smart one on every single level, and it helps Tesla and other automakers blast away problems with different standards and work together on the important task at hand, getting more electric cars on the road. The fuel a vehicle requires should be more important than the badge on the front of the car. And to date, the segregation hasn't helped that message get across. That's it. Thanks for joining me and see you next time.